Okay, um, I wanted to go over the contents of my three season bag. Um, it's, it's a little bit different than my winter bag for sure. Uh, one of the big changes is I actually use this is a uh, 46 liter outdoor products pack. It doesn't have a frame. Um, you can get it at Walmart for around $39 and it weighs 18 ounces. It is really super light. Um, 46 liter is sufficient enough to hold uh, everything that I'm about to show you with uh, some space left over. Um, and when you're ultra light, you know, ounces count, so slightly over a pound for this pack. I can't recommend it enough. Um, I've hiked several hundred miles with it last year and this year. Um, I actually own three of them now um, because I was afraid that at some point in time they may change the design or maybe stop selling them. So I bought a couple of extras in case I ever wear this one out. <clears throat> but I'm going to guess that I probably have total last year and this year probably over 400 miles with it. It's still in good shape. It don't have any rips or tears. Um, I really think it's going to last um, probably for a couple more years or unless something comes out lighter. As far as my sleep system, I do a hammock. I have an Eno Pro Nest. Up until this year, it was the lightest Eno uh, hammock that you could buy. It's around 9 ounces. Um, I use the Atlas straps along with the Pro Nest tarp. And then depending on the weather, I may actually take the bug net. Um, I, I've really only used it once and that was last year in the middle of the summer. Um, kind of depends on the weather and how bad the bugs have been. I also have four titanium stakes to use with the tarp setup. I have a 50 degree cheap sleeping bag that weighs about two pounds. Um, it does good down to, you know, it's rated at 50 degrees. I, it's the same bag I use in my winter kit. Um, it does really well. I also take a pair of flip flops. Um, these are Nike brand. They're kind of heavy. I've intended to replace them to reduce weight even more. I've never got around to it. Um, I prefer the open toed ones instead of the ones that have like the little piece of plastic that goes between your big toe. Because basically when I get out of the hammock at night to go to the bathroom or something like that, I just want to slip my feet into something uh, so I don't have to put my shoes or uh, trail running shoes on. Um, this closed cell foam pad I use um, often to set the flip flops on at night. Um, I use it when I want to sit down for lunch on a log or something so it's a little bit more comfortable so I sit on it. Um, I've also used it to, if I would get a cold spot, since I don't use an underquilt in my three season kit. Um, so if I get a cold spot in a hammock, I'll put it under a shoulder or whatever to get rid of the cold spot. Um, it does a great job for that and it weighs practically nothing. Uh, for water, inside the outdoor products bag I have a two liter water bladder but I only put one liter of water in it per day. That's my drinking water. It's filtered water. Um, and that's what I use to drink with. For cooking, I carry two 24 ounce water bottles. I keep them empty though throughout the day. And then as it's getting closer to uh, wherever I'm gonna set up camp or wherever my last water source is before I plan to set up camp, I'll fill them up. Um, this, this allows me to differentiate what water has been filtered and what water isn't. So if it's in the water bladder, it's been filtered. If it's in the water bottles, it hasn't been filtered and I can only use that for cooking or to filter for drinking water. Uh, to carry them around empty throughout the day also saves weight. Uh, both of those bottles filled up is about four pounds of weight. Um, and with them empty, they don't weigh really anything. Uh, so that, that's kind of one of the tips I can help you for, you know, so you're not really carrying around unnecessary weight is to keep your cooking water for your meals, uh, wait until the last moment to add water to those bottles and it'll help a lot. Some of the things um, you'll see that are similar to my uh, winter time video that I've already done and even similar to my day pack video or my necessities video. 
and those are going to be this. So basically I keep an essentials kit that basically has uh, hand lotion, hand sanitizer, toothbrush, travel size toothbrush, and travel size toothpaste. I also add to that for three season bug repellent, insect bite spray, and sunscreen. And sometimes I'll switch, I'll use the spray insect repellent which is 100 DEET and sometimes I'll use the wipes which is 30% DEET even though this is only a 15 uh, pack wipe usually when I use these wipes I take them out of the pack I put two per day in a Ziploc bag so one for the morning one for the evening and then times the number of days I want to be out so if I want to be out for three days I only take six instead of the full 15 that also helps cut down on the weight um, I also keep my most used items which are wet wipes and toilet paper in a separate bag easy to get to um, you know, wet wipes are nice to clean up with on the trail, uh, freshen yourself up after a long hike of sweating, that sort of thing. Um, a first aid kit. I went over this in the winter kit. I, I bought this first aid kit at Walmart. It's like $4.97. It is super light, just the way it came out of, uh, or just the way it was packaged up. It has various sized bandages. Uh, some sting relief, uh, alcohol wipes, um, some medical tape, that sort of thing. But then I added to it, I added Imodium AD. Great to have on the trail in case you get an upset stomach. You don't want to be getting dehydrated, so if you get diarrhea, this will take care of it really quick. Um, I also added some Advil. For the simple reason that normal ibuprofen, acetaminophen, and aspirin really does nothing for me usually if I get a headache. But Advil will knock a headache out really quick. So I prefer to take it. I also take some chapstick. Chapstick can be used not only for, um, you know, even in the summertime you can get chap lips from the wind. Um, but it can also be used to extend uh, tinder to help you make a fire. Uh, so I carry two sticks of it and then I also keep a lighter a spare lighter inside of my first aid kit so that all closes up just fine the way it is I also take a headlamp uh, this one I recently replaced compared to last year I had a Petzl headlamp last year um, it only had the white LEDs um, I switched to this one this year I actually bought it at Walmart. It was about a third or a quarter of the cost of the Petzl. I think this was around $14. It includes um, the red LEDs for night hiking. It has a bright setting, a dim setting, a flash setting. And I think that's it. But uh, either way, the cost of this was a lot cheaper than the Petzl. And not only that, um, it weighs about the same. So... There was no, no uh, weight savings obtained, but it did add the night red light option. And then I carry a Sea to Summit uh, mosquito head net. I think that's Sea to Summit. Ah, yep, Sea to Summit mosquito head net. These are definitely nice to have, especially in summertime when the bugs get really bad. You know, you'll sweat. So even if you use the... Um, even if you use the insect repellent, after hiking for several hours, you're going to sweat a lot of that off and bugs will still get attracted to you, say, mid-afternoon. And that head net really comes in handy for that. Okay, as far as food goes, this is my cook kit. I'll go over it in a minute. My water filtration kit is the Sawyer Mini Squeeze. I'll go over it in more details. This red bag is what I keep my food in. It is um, a waterproof bag. It's actually sufficient to hold about three. You could maybe even go four or five days of food in this one bag. And this is actually a cozy that I made. A homemade cozy out of a windshield um, sunscreen that I use to rehydrate meals in and keep them warm longer. Uh, 
I carry, this is pretty much a day's use of coffee and hot chocolate. So two or three packets of Taster's Choice coffee, two or three packets of Stevia and the Roll sweetener, and usually one package of hot chocolate. Sometimes I'll do two pa packages of hot chocolate. Uh, I don't have it here, but my morning meal usually consists of oatmeal. I put two packages of oatmeal into a Ziploc bag, and then I add some powdered, uh, I'm sorry, powdered milk to it. So that way, in the morning, all I have to do is heat some water up, pour it in the Ziploc bag, stick it inside my pot cozy to keep it warm a little bit longer, fix my coffee, and I'm ready to go. Um, for snacks throughout the day, Generally, this is what I take for a day snacks. A couple things of crackers. One are jalapeno crackers. There's a thing of peanut butter crackers. There's a 20 gram protein bar. A couple bags of single serving size nuts. Um, some Jack's Lynx turkey and cheese. And probably somewhere in there is all, yeah, some Slim Jims. So that's what I snack on throughout the day. I don't really do like a heated lunch. I just snack. And then I also carry um, corn chips. Corn chips, when you look at calories per volume or weight, are some of the most dense in calories. They're great to have with you. If you start to feel a little sluggish on the trail, you can eat you five or ten of those, and it's definitely a quick boost of energy. So I usually carry corn chips. And then my evening meal is always a heated meal. Um, sometimes I dehydrate my own meals and vacuum seal them to take. Uh, the last two or three times I've been out, I've gotten these new Mountain House Pro Packs, the single serving size. Uh, they're only like $4.50 a meal and they're really good. I like the sweet and sour pork better than the rice and chicken, but uh, the rice and chicken is just what I had available when I was doing this video. I also carry a pack of gum. I think that gum is great uh, to chew throughout the day when you're hiking to keep your mouth from getting dry, that sort of thing. Um, if you do also have a shortage of water, uh, you can pop a stick or two of gum in your mouth to kind of keep your mouth moistened until you get to your next water source. It does wonders. And then I also carry these energy uh, tabs that you can add to your water. I usually, uh, I plan to take two per day, so that would be, uh, I, th I think it's 16 ounces of water that it'll treat. It's uh, uh, electrolytes for water. I don't do it in my water all the time, but um, if I do start to feel like I'm a little low on energy, or I feel like I've gotten dehydrated, I will definitely use those. It helps a lot. Uh, for my bear bag, I use nylon rope. Um, this is actually lighter then 550 paracord and it's very strong um, I think I bought it at Walmart too it's a hundred foot length and I basically have two carabiners I tie one on the end of the rope use it to toss it over a limb pull it up tie the other one and then just kind of clip it onto the the rope to uh, secure it to the tree um, <clears throat> like I said it's about half the weight of 550 paracord so I think it's a better alternative for those that are weight conscious um, if you don't care about weight, use 550 paracord like everybody else does. Okay, um, trekking poles. I have a pair of cheap off-brand trekking poles. I've used them for several hundred miles. Uh, I planned uh, to replace them this year and haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, these weigh a little more than two pounds for the pair, and there are some out there that you know only weigh around a pound for the pair, and I'm basically going to upgrade them basically or I'm going to upgrade them uh, as an additional weight savings option and get uh, you know another pound cut off. I also have a selfie stick. I always take a video camera with me and a camera. I'd show you the video camera, but basically it's what I'm using to record this video with. It's a Canon uh, HD. It's super lightweight. It records. It does a great job. And then I also take a point and shoot camera which is a Sony uh, DSR RX100 uh, great camera there's a bag with two extra batteries and a microphone for the video camera basically a battery will go about one day uh, so for a multiple day hike I take it a battery per day so three days I take three batteries 
the one that's on the camera, the two that's in the bag for backups. I also take a GPS, not so much as to find my way, but to keep track of where I've been. Um, I use that data along with a heart rate monitor to gauge uh, how, how um, strenuous parts of trails are when people ask. Uh, I keep the GPS data around for if anybody wants to do the same hike that I've done, they can ask me for it and I'll give it to them gladly. So uh, there's that. Um, I also pretty much always take, at least for the gorge, um, I've always got the outrageous maps, topo maps. I absolutely love them. I've got a set for the Red River Gorge. I've got a set for Shotali Trace, Northern and Southern. Um, for and and when I do go to the gorge, I only take the section that I need. I don't take the whole set. So they've got these broken down to like one page sections and you know if I'm going to go to one place I only take the the map that covers that area. When I'm planning hikes using the gorge as an example I'll often use the official Daniel Boone National Forest for the Red River Gorge topo map as a way to plan and also a couple of books. I've got Hiking at the Red River Gorge, which covers all the major trails and points of interest. And then I've got Hinterlands, um, which covers the unknown trails and points of interest. So, these are things I don't take with me in the backpack. I simply use them at home as reference. And then, you know, I always take this map with me. Just the single page for the area I'm going. For clothing, I take a Frog Togs parka you can get these also at walmart they weigh practically nothing um i think they're like four dollars and 97 cents um in an emergency they can also be used as shelter or extra insulation as far as clothing goes i put them i put all of my clothing except for the frog togs in the hat inside this yellow waterproof bag types of clothing that i take um I wear a pair of uh, Columbia detachable leg pants. I wear them as shorts and then I keep the legs inside the clothing bag. So there's those two. Um, I take an extra pair of merino wool socks in case my socks get wet. I always have a clean fresh pair to wear at night. I have a Montbell down vest that I use for extra protection if it gets cold at night. I take a pair of silk gloves that are super lightweight. Um, I've wore these down into the teens and my hands stayed warm because they are silk. I have a Russell lightweight sport jacket. It weighs just a few ounces. I also have the matching Russell pants to the jacket that also weighs just a few ounces. It can be used as extra insulation. I take a beanie for nighttime if it does get cold. Uh, if you keep your head warm, generally the rest of your body is warm too. And then also I take uh, Thermarest Thermosilk base layer that's also silk. Uh, again, just in case the temperatures were to dip down into, say, below 50 degrees at night, I've always got a way to stay warm. For the hat, I only wear it whenever it rains. Sometimes I'll use it um, as shade if it's really hot. But when it rains, basically I put the hat on, then I put the frog togs on with it and pull the hoodie over top of the hat. It just kind of helps keep the uh, rain off of my glasses because I do wear glasses. Uh, so having the extra rim in front of your face helps a lot with that. Going back to the cook set. Also in a waterproof bag. I keep a camp towel. The camp towel is multi-purpose uh, in the event that it rains or I get dew on my uh, hammock tarp. I can use this to dry the tarp off before I stick it in the backpack. 
I can also use it to help clean up food. I keep a titanium long spoon. Somewhere between four, or I should say between two and eight ounces of alcohol, depending on the number of days. I have two of the four ounce bottles and a single two ounce bottle. So basically I take one ounce per heated meal or two ounces per day. Uh, one ounce is sufficient enough to uh, boil 20 to 24 ounces of water. This is the GSI Minimalist cook set with a few things added. Try to get the top off here. As stored inside, there's the little two ounce bottle. I also keep a lighter. This is the little pot holder. I keep a third method to start a fire with. So remember I've got a lighter in my first aid kit, a spare lighter, the lighter that's here. And then, then I got a ferro rod. This is the stand for my alcohol stove. This is the actual ever new alcohol stove that I use, titanium. I also keep part of a section of a Brillo pad that helps with cleaning up cookware. I keep a little small piece of aluminum foil. So basically, I set this up like this. Then this goes on. I ain't going to put the whole screen together, but just so you get an idea. So I put aluminum foil under the stove. That allows me to cook on, say, a log or if there's not a rock around or something like that without burning in the ground or burning a log or whatever. Then you take the minimalist stove out. Let's try to get this out of here. And I've taken some aluminum foil. So the, uh, the minimalist stove comes with a cozy. And then you've got your cup that you boil your water in. So I wrap some aluminum foil around it to kind of serve as a windshield. So when I cook, it basically works like this. Give me just a minute to set this stove up, stove stand. So you start your stove, you get the fire going, put your cup on there, put this aluminum foil around it like this, just let it sit dangle put this lid on it upside down so it boils quicker basically that will reduce the amount of fuel you use by half because even in the winter months without this aluminum foil it would generally take two ounces to boil that whole cup full of water I add this to it it takes roughly one ounce and I get a good 30 45 seconds sometimes 60 second boil with just one ounce of fuel and that's with this cup. I can't remember if it's 20 or 24 ounces. Feel nearly clear full. So 20 to 24 ounces is sufficient enough for my breakfast and morning coffee. And then 20 to 24 ounces of water is sufficient enough for my evening meal plus hot chocolate or coffee, whichever I decide to have. So that's basically my cook set. Uh, the other thing is too, once this is done, so you know your water's finally boiling. You got the lid on it. Your water's boiling, the stove burns out. You basically take the lid off. You take this little rubber holder thing. You move your cook pot into your cozy so you can now handle it with your fingers. Pour the water into the meal that needs rehydrated. Whatever water's left over, you make coffee or hot chocolate. Put the lid on it. The lid also has a drink place. And that will keep your uh, liquid hot inside that cozy for I, I'd say probably at least a good hour so that covers the cook set for water filtration 
I use the Sawyer Mini. I carry the 16 ounce and the 32 ounce bags with it. Um, so you got the filter here. Fill the fill the bag up with the water. Um, and I, the only water that I filter is the water I'm going to drink. If I'm going to cook with the water, I don't filter it at all because the uh, the heat kills whatever bacteria is there. And generally, as long as there's no sediment in the water, I don't worry about filtering it. So, uh, but there you go. So that's everything that I carry in my three season bag. Um, base weight without consumables is around, I think it's 16 pounds. Add the food and water, you're probably looking at another, uh, well, water's two pounds per liter. So two to four pounds per day of water and another two pounds per day in food on average. Any questions, ask in the comments.